I'm Lee Ryan Crosson, and you're listening to the Movie Raid Show. It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is actress as well as director Lee Ryan Austin. Hello. Hi. What's up with the film Crowbar that you're working with? I finished the film um, in uh, the end part of January and sent it right out to the festivals, and it, it's been doing okay. Very nice. How many festivals have you hit so far? From the last time, I believe that you advertised was between five or six at the time, a month or two ago. Well, I, just, I, I guess I can just run down the list. I've uh, gone to Houston. I got a Remy Award there, which is an award for excellence. It means that it's one of the top films, excellently done. Um, in, in Madrid, it's up for Best Short. That's coming up in Las Vegas. is coming up very shortly. Up for best short and best supporting actress. Francesca Roberson is up for that. And just to give you an idea of the competition, on the other side, the best supporting actors are actors like Martin Sheen, Eric Robertson, and Tim Ainsley. Some real heavy hitters at that one. And we're up for best short and best supporting there. San Antonio, best short and best director. Oh, that would be me about that. It's gotten a semifinalist in Nazareth, a best short short in London. This short at the International Film Festival was up for that. Just being chosen to screen is a big deal at these festivals because there's hundreds and sometimes thousands of films you're up against. Been selected to compete in Albuquerque. It was, it was the best winner at Changing Faces, best trailer. And uh, Regina's coming up soon in Saskatchewan, Canada for best film and just all over the place. The Austria, it, got, it was a winner in Austria and in London and also it's up for Glendale in California, which is a really big one. It's supposed to be one of the um, most glamorous festivals. And this is news. We're taking Crowbar over to Italy. Cool. Now, were you ever selective uh, in terms of which festival that you had to actually shell this out to? I was asked to um, show at this. That doesn't mean you get selected if you're asked. Like, you go on film festivals, and there's hundreds of festivals that you can select from. And you pay a certain amount of money, whatever it is, and basically that pays for your film to be looked at by the judges, and they decide if they're going to screen it or not, if they're going to show it on the big screen and put it in competition. Uh, just because you pay out the money and you send your film to them doesn't mean you get in. All the ones I named are ones that we are in that we were selected for, and we still have dozens that we're waiting to hear back from. All the way to, to Italy, once this gets selected there, does this become a little bit something, a new experience? with this film as well in terms of like different languages or do you have to like change anything up or is it pretty much as is and that's where it's going to be shelled out as well well that was a big learning thing for me i didn't know that you had to do subtitles at so many different places and one of the crazy things is whether you're sending your film to italy or wherever you're sending it they want american english subtitles so i guess the deal is that some people understand the english word or maybe they can understand reading if they give them both i guess people can figure it out but yeah so crowbar is now subtitled and when i say italy i mean i'm going to italy with crowbar it's not just a matter of spending it i'm actually going spending a month in italy and there are eight festivals there the crowbar is going to oh, very cool well be safe out there for one yeah you, can, you can't be not safe in italy it's the most amazing country so i'm really excited about that and uh, my bts photographer is going along yeah we're gonna make we're gonna make a splash over there i hope in terms of comparing to uh, the acting aspect, in terms of the directing aspect, actually better in terms of uh, more comfortable control in terms of, of character than directing? That's kind of interesting. It's, a, it's really a, it's a combined effort because the script basically tells you who your character is, the information and, and circumstances in the script that give you a good feeling of who your character is. Um, now, I'm not in Crowbar. I just directed Crowbar and wrote it. But when I'm acting, we call it mining the script like an old miner going down in there and digging around and looking around to see what's there. And we try and find out uh, who the character is, what we want, um, how we're going to get it, what, what's in our way. Uh, the director guides us and maybe wants uh, more of us than what we're giving or wants us to take a different angle. And so it really is a combined effort. Yeah, because in terms of like acting aspect of things, you got to figure out so many, so many factors in terms of where the character is and as well as what's going on in the script. As in terms of directing aspect of things, you're more like where can the character go as well as focus on the script in terms of between limitations and so forth. Yeah, the director has an overall feel of where the whole story is going to go and how those players help move the story ahead. So yeah, as 
as a director, yeah, you've got that overall picture in mind. Now, in, in Crowbar, something really interesting about Crowbar is that originally the story had a uh, lead, a grandmother role, who was the hero in it. And when I was casting, we couldn't find the right person. It just, you know, you never know if the cast how it's going to come out. In Crowbar, it didn't matter whether someone was um, African American or Caucasian or from India. It didn't matter. Um, it just had to be a family unit involved with a grandmother. And when we got through casting, it ended up being a white family. But the woman who really rolled our socks up and down was a black woman. And so what do you do? And as the writer, I have that option to make the story because there, there's a need of the story. There's a purpose to the story. And this woman just had the right personality for it. So I rewrote the story. And so it is no longer a grandmother role. It is a next door neighbor person. And that way we could hire Francesca Roberson for the part. Working between film projects, do you think giving some of this responsibility to others can actually serve a, a better quality than just taking the responsibility? Well, you mean as far as that, uh, giving your crew and actors wings and letting them fly? Yeah, yeah. I think that I think the key to putting any good project together, whether it be film or, or whatever it is, is to hire good people. Good Good, talented people who can do the job and then let them do it get out of their way and let them do it because um, yes as the director you're responsible for how it turns out but um, you're also responsible if you get in people's way and it could have been better if had you let them alone I had what I would call a dream team the actors and the crew were amazing uh, people still marvel at how did you get all these people together at one time these are amazing people and I stood back in amazement most of the time watching them work and watching the performances yeah because sometimes either a director or maybe the production itself uh, as well as a company that's involved will tend to get a little bit more firm in terms of okay this is how this is going to happen this is how this is going to happen and not really give a, a tremendous amount of leadway for the actual career itself well a lot of it is budget you know because of budget can't always do take after take after take because you've got to move on to the next scene or you can't get the actor you want or you can't get the location you want a lot of that's because of money um, in my particular situation I just had an, a, a miracle occurrence happen where uh, <laughs> he was at the time he was a stranger came along and funded the whole thing he was relative of a gal that I met and, and I told him the story and he just really liked it and said uh, yeah yeah let's uh, let's do this and I was in shock I was able to hire the really great people that I really wanted and uh, they were all willing to cut their rates just a little bit because they believed in the story uh, the whole kinds of things are going on within this production and having to get that little little pocket of uh, breath of fresh air at, the, at that moment is you know it's, it's always it's kind of rare in some cases because you're just constantly working on working and working well it's very rare to to have a budget so many indie producers and directors the writers have to do indiegogo and everything else to get funding and i mean it, it's hard because you you basically have to go out there and beg for nickels and dimes to put this production together and when you've got hundreds of indie producers that that all have good films that they believe in that that's really from their heart you want everybody wants to help everybody else but you've only got so much jingle in your pocket you know you can't fund them all so this was like a real miracle thing that this happened and he just really believed in the story and it, it crowbar is my story which i didn't tell everybody that when i first started shooting because i wanted people to want to be involved in the story on its own merit rather than oh let's help lee out yeah, that's also on the fence, too, because when, when you're presenting this type of film, it becomes sometimes, in a way, a little bit of a charitable case, depending on where you're going. And having to represent and present this in your own way without making it look like that and trying to just raise some kind of awareness can be very difficult because when you're shouting this out everywhere, everyone else wants to kind of advertise it and market it into something else. Mm -hmm. The thing about Crowbar is that although it is my story, it is I found that in the process of looking for cast and crew, I found so many people that said, oh my gosh, I really want to be involved in this. This is my story. Oh my gosh, I've been through this. Or I know so many people who have. And what amazed me is that Ethan Erickson and, and Jeff Chambers, who you, you had interviewed, he, who does music, and Ethan did the editing, the two of them basically put the trailer together. And the trailer was very short, but it was very effective. And even in playing the trailer along with some other films that had already been produced, I had a father come up to me, and he had like moist eyes, and he said, I need to go talk to my 
my daughter. And that was just from the trailer, the way it is right now, because everybody's so busy. There's just too many incidents that the children, you know, are really, they're just not given the love and attention that they deserve. And so, you know, they go out into the world searching. And there are gangs and there are predators and traffickers that are just looking for that, that hungry, hollow look. Statistics prove that if, a, that if a kid doesn't feel any value, that he or she will become a victim. Crowbar is really about the fact that, well, I call it a crowbar moment. And, and it's like everybody needs crowbar moment where somebody stands between them and physical or emotional harm. And that's the moment when that happens, and I think that's happened to every single person listening, where they remember that moment where there was a bully or an unkindness or something, and somebody stepped in and rescued them or stood between them and the bad guy, and you never forget that because at that moment it's like your heart swells and you realize I'm somebody. Somebody loves me. I have value and we all need that. The log line on my film is that a film can be shaped by one single incident. It can be reshaped by another. You know, something really bad can happen in your life that just knocks your knees out and you're down on the ground and it's one incident in your life and it sticks with you and it makes you believe something negative about yourself or that you're nothing or that you're not smart or you're not pretty or you're not this or you're not that. You know, all it takes is one thing to basically say you're not worth anything. It could have been something your dad said or your mom said or your brother or a neighbor and it sticks with you. But then somewhere in your life, there'll be, one, there'll be another incident and somebody will come swooping in and that one incident can mask and soften all of the bad stuff that happened to you. So it doesn't take a lot. And I, I guess what I'm saying is that we all have the opportunity, if we have our eyes open and we're willing to look around and get our face out of our phone and look around us, there are so many incidences where someone needs a smile or someone to sit down and just say hello to them. It, it's amazing what that can do for another human being. The thing is, when you find your value in helping other people and seeing where someone else needs something and you're able to provide that for them, all of a sudden, bam, it hits you. So I do have value and I can do something for someone else and that makes me feel good and it makes me feel valuable and worthy. And that is the good cyclic thing that can happen. Go ahead and plug in any websites that regarding the crowbar or anything else that we can check out right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's www.crowbarthefilm.com. And it's also on Facebook, just Crowbar the Film on Facebook. There you have it, everybody. Lee Ryan. Thank you so very much.